Autism is amongst the most severe of behavioral disturbances. It usually starts at birth or within the first 30 months of life. Autistic individuals are extremely isolated. They rarely interact with others and lack many social and self-help skills. Autistic children rarely play appropriately with toys. They use objects for simple sensory feedback or self-stimulation. Repetitive behaviors, such as body rocking, are also self-stimulatory. Some children, like Beth, have extreme tantrums and may injure themselves. Others, like John, may have to be restrained to prevent self-injury. Valentine, look at me. Valentine. Valentine. Like Valentine, they are extremely inattentive and do not Valentine. seek the approval of others. Point to white. No, point. Valentine. 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 Point. Valentine. What's my name? What's my name? What's her name? What's her name? What's your name? What's your name? No. While half of all autistic children are mute, What's your name? most of the rest just repeat what others say. Pamela. Behavior known as What's echolalia. Mine. Oh, Ricky. Ricky. Good. What's your name? Mm. Ricky. <laughs> Autistic children have a number of behavioral deficits and excesses. They lack the use of language, emotional attachment to other people, attention to the environment, toy play, peer play, and self-help skills such as toileting or dressing. Their excesses consist of self-stimulation, tantrums, and aggression. Almost all attempts to teach and treat them have failed. More than 95% need custodial care the rest of their lives. A great loss to themselves, their families, and society. Autism is probably biological in origin, but the specific cause or causes remain unclear. The behavioral treatment approach for autistic children was influenced by the research of psychologist B.F. Skinner, his book, The Behavior of Organisms, published in 1938, scientifically demonstrated that consequences had powerful and predictable influences on behavior. Skinner called the process operant conditioning. This process has broad application to human behaviors. A consequence or event which strengthens behavior is called a reinforcer. Examples include food or drink, touching, hugging or kissing, praise, a favored activity. Under operant conditioning, when a behavior is followed by a reinforcer, there is an increased probability the behavior will recur in a similar setting. When a behavior is not followed by a reinforcer, it will decrease or not recur. Lisa, three years old, has been autistic from birth. She doesn't speak she doesn't play with toys. She is content to arrange and rearrange a set of favorite objects. The teacher, Ivar Lovas, will reinforce the behavior of sitting using food, paired with praise. Lisa tantrums when anyone attempts to teach her. Sit. Lisa 
Mrs. Tantrums are ignored or not reinforced, so they should decrease or extinguish. Sit down. Sit. Good boy. Sit. Now, Lisa. The teacher prompts Lisa with a shoulder tap. Sit down. Sit down. Champion, yes. Good sitting. Oh, that's good sitting. Yes. Good girl. Okay. Um, sit down. Good, good, good. Very good. Lisa now sits without a prompt and without tantruming. Okay. Sit down. Good, good Lisa. Good. 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 That's good, Lisa. Oh, how nice. Oh, good looking. How good looking, Lisa. That's good looking. Yeah, it's good looking. <laughs> oh, so, so good. Okay. <laughs> Sit down. Instructions are simple. Sitting. Look at me. Yeah, look at me. That's good looking. Good looking. Oh, that's good looking. Oh. <laughs> what do you know? Yeah. Good, good, good. Sit down. Good. That's good, Lisa. Good sitting, yeah. That was good. Yeah. 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 That was good. That's good. The teacher discovers that kissing is a reinforcer for Lisa. Sit down. Good sitting. Yeah. Here. Some more. Yeah. Yeah. Good sitting. Very good sitting. Yeah. That's my darling. <laughs> my darling. Now that Lisa has learned to sit attentively. She will be able to learn other behaviors from the teacher. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. As often happens, after the teacher began to ignore Lisa's tantrums, she increased the intensity of her tantrum. This predictable occurrence is called an extinction burst. The teacher remained patient and continued to ignore the tantrum. These data show that in a period of 18 minutes, the teacher reduced Lisa's tantrums by ignoring them and by building alternate behaviors. In operant conditioning, new behaviors such as sitting are developed by giving short and simple instructions and by reinforcing the behaviors immediately after they occur. As Lisa's teacher reinforced her sitting with food and praise, Lisa gradually learned to respond to the request to sit without needing a prompt. In 1964, psychologist Ivar Lovas started a long-term research and treatment program at UCLA. Pamela and Ricky were among the first autistic children to receive intensive behavioral interventions. What is this? What is this? Cookie? Good girl. Cookie. At one month into treatment, Cookie. teaching Good. differential labeling. Initially, food was one of the few effective reinforcers. What is this? Cookie. Good girl. Betty? Buddy. That's good, Ricky. Who Buddy, is this? Buddy. That's right, Ricky. What is Betty doing? Betty is blowing. Is blowing. That's At good. two months, teaching what verbs. Undergraduate and graduate students at UCLA volunteered as therapists as an aspect of their own training. Who is this, Ricky? That's good. And what is Betty doing? Good boy, Ricky. Good boy. Ricky, put the block on top of the dresser. At four months, teaching prepositions. Ricky, put it on top of the dresser. Ricky? That's inside. Put it on top. Good boy. Where's the block, Ricky? The block is on top of the dresser. Good boy. What are you wearing? A blue sweater. No. At six months, teaching pronouns. What is this? Social rewards have replaced food reinforcers. What are you wearing? I want a shirt. That's right. Very good. That's a very good. Good girl, Pam. Ricky, what's your name? Ricky. That's right. 
At eight months, teaching conversational speech. What's your name? No, I want you to say that. Say, what's your name? No. Say what? Say your. Say name. That's right. Now say it all together. What's your name? Joan. Is this a closet? Yes. Is this a dresser? Yes. Is this a dresser? Yes, that's good. Is this a floor? Yes. At 12 blanket? months, yes. building that's spontaneity. Yes. What do they wear on their feet? Swim fins. Yeah, that's right. What do they wear on their backs? Aqualung. Good. What's At 14 the months, Compressor. teaching storytelling. Good. Where do they go? Hey, look at me. Where do they go? Go swimming in the lake. That's right. What do they do underneath the lake? Hey. Skin divers. That's right. What do they look for? Look for buried treasure. That's right. Underneath the ocean. Right. How much do you love me? Tons and tons. Tons and tons. Have a lot. Clickety clack. Clickety clack. Clickety clack. Go the railroad track. That's right. What else does a train say? <laughs> At ages seven and eight, Pam and Ricky had made significant improvements, but still had language and social skill deficits. Unfortunately, after 14 months, they had to be discharged to a state hospital so that the treatments could be offered to other children. The staff at the state hospital did not have the resources to follow through with the behavioral treatment. Sadly, both Pam and Ricky lost most of their gains. In recent years, however, the state hospital has developed behavioral treatment programs and Pam and Ricky have both benefited. Pam has remained in the state hospital. She is able to carry out some basic household tasks though she has lost much of her appropriate speech. Stir it up. Good work. You're doing great. Without alternative behaviors, Pamela regresses. Ricky lives in a small teaching home in the community. Ed, his therapist at UCLA 20 years ago, comes to visit. Hi, Ricky. Hello, Pam. How are you? I'm fine. Can I come in? Yes. Give me a hug. It's good to see you. You look real good, Rick. Yeah. What have you been doing? Let's sit down and talk a while. Ricky has lost most of his language skills and spontaneity. So how old are you now? I am 28 years old. Uh-huh. We used to go to a little restaurant. We used to go to our little restaurant. Unlike Pamela, Ricky has developed some recreational skills, such as rug hooking. With assistance, Ricky participates in the community. What would you like, Rick? A cheeseburger. Red tomato. Have you had to? No, I'm sorry. Okay, speak up. I want a cheeseburger. Okay, wait, wait. I love this. A thousand olive dressing. Could you speak up, please? A thousand olive dressing. A single? A single. A passion burger. With cheese, lettuce, tomato, onion, and passion olive dressing? Yes. Fries with your order? Oh, French fries with ketchup. 
anything to drink? A small cup. Pepsi, all right? Pepsi. Five or six. In 1964, before treatment was started, neither Pam nor Ricky had any meaningful language. During 14 months of treatment, their language increased appreciably. Then, during three years of no behavioral treatment in a state hospital between 1965 and 1968, they lost most of their language. They were treated for a second time in 1968 and regained much of their language only to lose it once more during two more years in the state hospital. Similar changes also occurred in play, social interaction, and self-stimulation. The alternation between treatment and no treatment was not planned, but it produced an experimental design called ABA reversal. The data showed that the children's improvements were the result of the treatment they received rather than some other variable. Thus, in 1969, these data led to the following conclusions. On the positive side, behavioral treatment helped increase appropriate and complex behaviors, such as language. Also, it reduced serious problem behaviors, such as self-injury. And the longer the treatment lasted, the more the improvement. But the data also highlighted two major weaknesses. First, the children never caught up to other children their age in language and other behaviors. And second, the children regressed when treatment was removed. In 1970, major steps were taken to improve the treatment. Well, Ned seems pretty fussy today. First, the treatment was given to very young children, less than four years of age, because data showed they did better than older children. Secondly, the treatment was moved away from the clinic into the child's home and community, and the parents became part of the treatment team. Thirdly, the children were treated more intensively and for longer periods of time. That's nice, Nathan. Ball. Yeah, that's nice. A scientific study was done with two groups of children to examine the effects of this treatment. In the experimental group of 19 children, each child received an average of 40 hours treatment per week. In the control group, each child received an average of 10 hours treatment per week. To ensure that the children in both groups were autistic, independent clinicians made the diagnoses. A large number of pretreatment measures were obtained to compare the experimental and control groups at the beginning of treatment. The children in the two groups were practically the same age at diagnosis. 32 and 34 months. The children were close in age when they started treatment. Both groups had about the same IQ, falling in the mentally retarded range of intellectual functioning. Both groups had more boys than girls, since autism is four times more common among boys. Their parents had comparable socioeconomic status. Age at onset of walking was similar. About half of the children had no language. A similar number of children in each group actively rejected their parents' attempts to show them affection. Most of the children did not have basic self-help skills, such as appropriate toileting. Over 80% of the children in both groups were extremely inattentive. Over 85% of the children had severe tantrums. More than half of the children did not play with toys. About 90% of the children exhibited excessive self-stimulation, such as rocking, spinning, and twirling. None of the children played with peers. To summarize, these objective measures show that the two groups were quite similar to each other before treatment was started. Therefore, differences after treatment could then be attributed to the intensive treatment provided for the experimental group.